Hello, WordPress developers. Today, I'm going to share something with you that may transform your workflow. The Live Canvas team received great feedback on the OpenAI GPT integration, but they didn't stop there. There's a competitive landscape of large language models, and now we can use so many of them in Live Canvas. Previously, when I wanted to experiment with various models, I would have to go to each website, ask for Bootstrap 5 HTML, give the context to the website, and then do this tedious process of copy pasting code. Now that's totally eliminated. We can do it right inside the Live Canvas editor. And the context is already there. It already knows to use Bootstrap. It's an amazing workflow. In the latest version of Live Canvas, we now have an integration with OpenRouter.ai. This gives us access to multiple cutting edge AI models directly right within the page builder interface. I've been testing this out for the past few days and have been getting great results. Uh, what's funny is, since starting to prepare to make this video, there have been some big announcements from a few of the AI companies, and somehow the Live Canvas team is keeping up. We're gonna see some of those models in there today. And this new update actually makes it easier for the Live Canvas team to keep up with the breathtaking speed of innovation in AI, because it's now a single integration with Open Router, and that acts as a gateway to numerous AI services, and you might use different ones for various aspects of your builds. Personally, I've been using Gemini for the HTML and Claude is my go-to for the writing, but now there's also free models. There's actually no risk to just getting started and experimenting a little. So let me show you how to set this up. To get started, go to openrouter.ai. I created my account by clicking sign in and then clicking sign up. The account creation process is pretty standard. Once you've done that, you have your account and there's a drop down of all the controls that we're gonna look at here today. There's also dark mode. Um, but first I wanna show you the credits. Nine days ago I added $10 and I've been using it as I prepare for this and for a client project. Um, so I've used a dollar, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. Anyway, you'll need to add money here. Um, if you go to settings, you can have a low balance notification. So if you do start to run out of funds, this is how you're gonna do it. Next, you're gonna to need to create some keys. So to get started, you're gonna create a key. I'm gonna call this like client one. And you can give that project a credit limit in US dollars. But I'm just gonna hit create. And this is one of those, you only get to see it once kind of keys. So you wanna copy that to your clipboard because um, you won't be able to see it again, but it's easy to create another key if you need to. So I'm gonna close that. Now, before we add that API key to our project, I do wanna show you a couple other things. There are a ton of models, 328 right now. Only a small subset of these are inside of Live Canvas and we can look those up now. So I, I could like start typing to fuzzy search that or over here, there's a bunch of filters and I could just like click on a series. So I know we are using Claude 3.7 and 3.5 in the version of Live Canvas today. And I just wanted to like just show you that even if I type in Claude 3.5, there are a number that have that name. So you wanna be very careful to choose the right one. And then if you go into it, you can see its cost. They typically have a few different providers like that are relaying the API or however that science works. And so far, anytime I've looked, the price has been the same on all of these. So I'm looking at Claude 3.5 here and you can see it's $3 for a million input tokens and $15 for output tokens. This is one of the more expensive models. Let's compare it to Gemini 2.0 Flash. I just changed my screen around just so we can compare apples to apples a little bit. Now we can see like Gemini Flash 2.0 has an input cost of 10 cents per million tokens with an output cost of 40 cents. And so there's a massive difference in terms of like the price of these things, but 1 million tokens is actually quite a bit, even though there is a massive cost difference. Yesterday, I built a whole page using Claude 3.7 Sonnet. I used screenshot to code, I used it, I don't know, on 10 or 12 sections. And you know, it's this more expensive model. The whole page cost me 24 cents. So do keep that in mind that token costs, while they can fluctuate by an enormous margin, you're still not looking at that much cost for the average request you're probably gonna make building your website. And then there are the free models. So this is something new this week, Gemini Flash Lite 2.0 Preview Free. This is in live canvas as of today, the time of recording, but maybe this is one of those things that they'll just do as an experiment here and there. Maybe this isn't going to last, who knows? Things change very quickly, but like truly 
you make a request, it generates the stuff, zero cost. I've used this a bit, and in my experience, I do prefer the nicer models, the, <laughs> the name brand ones. So I do prefer regular Gemini Flash 2.0, but it's for experimenting, you can't beat this. This is, this is great. It still does write working HTML. After you play with these models a bit, you're gonna wanna see what stuff costs. So you go to activity from up here. From the activity page, you can see the cost of each prompt and screenshot to code request that you make within Live Canvas. Most of the cost from yesterday was from Claude 3.7. This is in preparing for the next video that we're gonna have on the YouTube channel. So I can see that yesterday I racked up a total of 96 cents in uh, token usage. So even using the more expensive model cost me like a dollar for the price of having an assistant. I mean, that's just, it's still a bargain. It's really quite shocking to see that the most expensive request I made yesterday cost less than a nickel. So now to integrate Open Router with Live Canvas, you need to have your API key copied and then go into the back end of your website, go into the Live Canvas menu and go down to AI integration. And you're gonna paste that key here in the Open Router API key field, then hit save. So now let's see that in effect. I'm going to go into the Live Canvas editor for a new page that I've just created and I'm gonna build from scratch. Now I'm gonna hit add section and if I hover over that section and click on this little blue menu, I can come down to AI Assistant. If you have the latest version and the API set up, you will see a whole bunch of new models in here. So there's 3.7 Sonnet. Here's a couple of the free models. Going back to Open Router for a second, the most expensive model that I know of is uh, the new OpenAI GPT 4.5. Its cost is $75 per million input tokens and $150 for the output tokens. That's going to be added into Live Canvas and then in brackets, it's going to say expensive. So you will see that in here. I love those kind of helpful hints. For now, let's leave it on Claude 3.7 Sonnet. That is one of the more expensive ones, but I just wanna demonstrate what's the upper limit cost that you might face on a more expensive model. Now, before we get started, I also wanna highlight that in Screenshot to Code, we have a different subset of models here. These are ones that the team has found work best for screenshots. I'm also gonna leave that on Claude 3.7 Sonnet. Now, for today's test, I wanna build this hero section for my website. I got that on Envato Elements. I actually logged in and I licensed that to my Live Canvas project. So I'm gonna start by doing that with Screenshot to Code. Now I'm going to upload a screenshot. So I hit choose file. I'm gonna choose my, my screenshot there. And if I wanted, I could add more context, but let's, uh, let's just ask it to convert to code. Every model takes a different amount of time. I think that took roughly about 30 seconds. So let's see how that did. So just changing to two columns so we can compare the two. I see that it has all of the main ingredients, but obviously there's some tweaks needed. Uh, this button is incredibly narrow. Um, these controls are quite big compared to how they might look over here. But as a starting point, like this is incredible. And that's been my ultimate takeaway as I play with this. I'm just going full screen here. The AI makes perfect wireframes. So you take your design, you bring it in here. Now we need to add the background images, tweak some things, play with the sizing of fonts. But what a time saver, 30 seconds to build this. And now we can just add the design layer. It's perfect. Now I'm gonna try and build this with a prompt. So I'm gonna hit add section again, go to the AI assistant, and I'm gonna carefully word this. So I took some time to write this prompt while looking at the hero image. So I wrote, build me a hero banner with BG secondary background with a centered title description and call to action button. Below the banner, I want an overlapping floating BG white toolbar that has a form with three fields, destination, check-in and checkout dates as well as an inquire button. Uh, you'll notice I got rid of this field. I just don't know if it adds anything and it might start fixing the spacing issues that I have. So let's ask AI to build me this. It actually built that in less than half the time uh, and that's pretty good. I like the spacing a lot better, but this form field isn't overlapping and I felt like that's where the magic is. I do like the shadow though. Anyway, let's try to fix that. Let's go back to the AI assistant. So now I'm gonna request, please put the form as a sibling to the BG secondary banner, but overlapping it with a negative margin. That's a little bit of developer talk. I mean, that's how I would build it. So let's see if it can do that. There you go. That took about 14 seconds. So again, half the time of the screenshot, but about the same time to build the whole thing in the first place. What's funny is that now from the front end, uh, I actually do have date fields here. 
whereas the screenshot to code didn't do that. I mean, that's the kind of little thing that you're gonna be tweaking. Here's something else delightful. I'm gonna look at the HTML for this section. And in here, there's some JavaScript listening for these events to make sure that the check-in date at least is today and that the checkout date is later than the check-in date. So we got different results with prompting versus screenshot to code. And I love the easiness of screenshots, but there's something about prompting that forces me to really think about what I want and to articulate it more clearly. In the past, I've worked at an agency with a larger team. So I know the thrill of receiving a really well-written JIRA task or like some task that's given to you where it's explained very well what they want. And that's like the process that you have to go through to do a really good prompt. It's kind of like management training or teaching you how to explain a problem really well like to a junior developer. There's an old saying that a problem that's well explained is half solved already. And so keep that in mind as you make your prompts. We're gonna go more in depth on this kind of thing in the next video. So now I've come back to open router and you, you'll remember that we did one screenshot to code, we did a prompt and we did a prompt fix. And so we're looking at these three entries here. Screenshot to code cost three cents and then the following two requests cost about two cents. So that brings the total cost of today's experiment to six cents. Pretty awesome. And so there you have it. We've now connected Open Router with Live Canvas, and your AI assistant has even more capabilities. It's truly impressive how much this integration can streamline the workflow. There's no more copy paste and context switching. It's just this like seamless integration. So whether you're gonna use prompts or screenshot to code, this version of Live Canvas gives us even more power. In the next video, we're gonna share some more tips and tricks and quirks about these AI models and go a little deeper on some examples with the AI assistant. Now that we have free models, there's literally no reason not to try it, but a couple days of playing with the fancy models only cost me a dollar. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe to the channel for more exciting live Canvas updates, and please do leave a comment below with your experiences so far using generative AI. Until next time.